Today we're going to look at this Lab Gear power supply. This is a power supply that's used to power a masthead amplifier. Now, a uh, masthead amplifier basically sits between the TV aerial and this, and it increases the gain of the signal. What happens is the aerial plugs into the amplifier, the amplifier goes uh, and comes down to here, and then this signal goes to the TV. So yesterday we switched on the television and there was it came up as no signal. We have a very weak reception in uh, this part of the country and so we need this to give us a stronger signal. These have gone wrong in the past. I've had this system in place for a number of years and one of these failed previously. So I thought, okay, I'll have a look. And sure enough, the little green light when you plugged it in wasn't on. These things run 24-7, don't get switched off because obviously you could turn your TV on at any time of the day or night. Without this, we don't have television, so we have to get this fixed. They're, they're quite inexpensive, these things. They're about 15 or 20 pounds. Um, quite easy to get hold of, but we've got a repair channel, so why not try and repair it? Let's plug it in first, just see exactly what we're dealing with. Take this off. We'll plug that in, and as you can see, nothing. The, the green light should come on, so there's no activity there at all. Okay, let's unplug it. And let's see if we can get into it now. I can't see any screws on it, but I think there's. Um, Let's zoom in a bit. I think if you look carefully, there's a, a little bit of a one there, another one there. Yeah, so there seems to be two there. Please don't copy what you see in these videos, especially with mains powered items. My guess with this is it's going to be capacitors. With these things that are on all the time, generally what happens is the capacitors go, they start bulging and uh, they no longer work. Okay, so what do we have here? Now let's zoom in a bit further. All the capacitors look fine, actually. Right. So what do we have here? So we have the input. Yeah, I'm going to have to be really, really careful with this. So it goes into the resistor. So let's see what this is. So this is 15 ohms, is that right? Let's get the calculator, see what the colours are on this one. Brown, black, black, 10 ohms. Yeah, that's okay. So the capacitors all look fine. Don't think that the, this big resistor that it comes into also looks fine. It goes to here, which is this diode here. So let's check. It goes to there. It's open. Point six. So that looks good. And it goes across to this cap, round to this cap, and then into this resistor here. What about this one here? Zero six. I'm 
Ah, that doesn't look right. Let's find out what diode this is. I think maybe we take this one off and test it out circuit. So let's get the solder iron hooked up. Maybe we'll just put some extra solder on here. So this just helps the solder flow a bit better having some leaded solder on there. Just a little bit more to this side. There we are. I'm just going to add a little bit of flux. This helps when we use the tool to remove the solder. So it's out, one side out of circuit. I think that'll be okay for now. So let's uh, Yeah, so that's that's not good. Let's try the other other way. Yeah, yeah. So that diode is completely shorted. So let's get it out of there. There we are. Okay, and just to demonstrate with it fully out, try to make, not make it ping off. Yeah, so that is 0.04. So this is an SR2100, which appears to be a 2 amp 100 volt shock key diode don't think I've got any of those, so I need to get some in. Okay, so I'll order some of these up, uh, get them in, and then we'll fit it and see if it works. Okay, so the new diode has arrived. So let's get the tester on this and see if this one is any different. Okay, so it's in diode mode. So that's open. Um, 0.34 which is more like what I would expect okay let's get this into the circuit and see if that makes a difference right so let's uh, here let's zoom in just a bit a little bit of flux on here and here just to take this off That's good. There we are. So make sure it's the right way around. Solder this down, put a little bit of flux on it again. Just help the solder a little bit. Let's cut off. There we go. Just put a bit of IPA on this. And we'll 
get rid of the flux and clean it up. Lovely. Okay, let's put this in here. So, like that. Get the LEDs moved out of the way. And then let's push the board in. That in properly. And that does fit on there. Right, my opinion with this is, is one of two things are going to happen. Either something else is shorted in this, which took out this diode, and it's going to blow again, or it's going to start working. Not sure, so I'm going to stand well back. Please don't copy anything you see in these videos. So I'm going to be standing well back. I have my protective glasses on just in case some hot metal goes flying across the room. But hopefully that won't happen. Hopefully this is enough to fix it. But let's find out. It's unplugged at the other side, so I can safely plug this in. And now I'm going to plug it in at the other side of the extension. Here goes. Three, two, one. Let's just switch off the big lights. Great, very happy about that. So that was the fault. Obviously we'll plug it up to the TV and make sure it's okay, and that's it. Okay, so let's just put these two back in. Everyone's switched off now, so <laughs> nobody watches to the end. So those, those parts, I bought five of them and they cost about three pounds so as i say it was about a, a fifth of the price of buying a new one but uh, yeah i guess that one just uh, failed eventually having been on for uh, two years probably non-stop so there we go lab gear power supply very happy i've got this fixed and now the rest of the family can watch tv and i'm sure they'll be very happy Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.